All right, so this right here is a project I have been working on for the past two weeks. Um, as you can see, I'm still within the blockout stage, so topology is still rough in some areas and I have not yet started to polish. Um, however, I've realized that I think for the most part I only use like five different tools or techniques in order to create those shapes. Um, and while I won't be covering any design principles or any polishing methods, um, I will be sharing those tools right now. Okay, so in order to start off, I figured it might be good to take a look at a base mesh. Um, so I'm not working with base meshes all of the time. However, every now and then, especially when doing characters, it just takes a lot of work because you don't really have to think about proportions and stuff because the basic anatomy has already been laid out. So in order to start off, um, I'm either selecting by holding Control and Shift, um, or and this is like I think the most widespread method um, would be to mask and extract. So by holding down Control, I am able to draw a mask onto my mesh, um, which I can then refine and extract. So once I'm happy with the overall result, um, in some cases it might be necessary to sharpen the mask. Um, Another thing that works great is blur and, and sharpen, like in that order. So first you go ahead and blur the mask and then afterwards you can sharpen again for better results. Um, and then we can start to extract our subtool. So there are a few different ways. So in the extract menu, um, we can set a thickness. Um, so say I would extract right now, you can see that it already creates some sort of some sort of thickness, just like for example in Solidify, Modify, and Blender. Um, however, I will be using a different technique, um, which I'll be showcasing later on. So for now, I'm just extracting as like a planar surface um, without any thickness, um, and then I can hit Extract and then Accept. So now, if I hide the other subtool and um, if I clear the mask, you can see that I've got a new area to work with. So now for the second tool, um, a brush that comes in very handy when you're trying to create planar hard surface shapes um, is like the H polish brush, which is similar to like scraping in Blender or even flatten. Um, essentially, as you can see, it creates a planar area um, and then it interpolates like the topology around and it tries to create a planar area of those those curve like elements so i can now use h polish in order to essentially lay down hard edges and planes and at this stage it might be good to take a look at your reference um, just to make sure that you're actually respecting anatomy or the overall design you're aiming for Okay, so the way I like to add depth and thickness to my subtools would be to use panel loops. So under geometry, you can go to the panel loops menu and 
as you can see, if we hit panel loops, it is going to create um, new geometry um, that like imitates the shape of our pre-existing um, polygroups. So as you can see, it creates panels and, and loops wherever our polygroups divide. So if we do not want any segments, um, the best way to achieve that is by masking everything and then hitting Control W and then we assign a singular polygroup and then afterwards we can create panel loops. One button that is fairly interesting would be like the elevation. Um, so essentially 100 elevation means that we are going to extrude like outwards. Um, so like if we set the value to zero, um, we are like extruding inwards and outwards equally. So that's actually great to know because sometimes you do not want to like extrude inwards. Um, and then going from there, we've got like new geometry and then perhaps we can subdivide once more. And another thing I like to do um, would be in order to create like interesting insets. Um, you could mask any shapes um, and then we can use like the transpose tool in order to create insets. So once again, I'm hitting the mask menu and I'll sharpen and even blur and sharpen. And then by hitting control and then pressing outside of like the model, we can invert the mask. And then if I hit W and I zoom out, I can find my transpose tool. Um, and then this button right here is eventually just like resetting the gizmo um, to our unmasked mesh center, as you can see. And then we can start to like drag inwards and scale. So this is a fairly great method in order to create like interesting shapes and insets um, even though we're using complex meshes. Um, so afterwards it might be necessary to use edge polish again and sometimes those panel loops actually like tend to tend to flatten out our hard edges or tend to soften them. So it always depends like on the type of look you're aiming for. So we might have to redo some polishing work. Um, however, we do have like perfect quad topology, which can be subdivided and unsubdivided. One of the main advantages um, of those polygroups that have been created with the panel loops would be that later on when I'm trying to polish, I will essentially Z-remesh um, and I will tell like the Z-remesher to respect our polygroups. So it will detect those polygroups as edges and therefore it will crease or create detail creases. Um, so I won't lose any edge detailing. And that's probably like the main reason I'm using panel loops most of the time. So apart from that, there are some like very easy block out techniques when it comes to using like the damn standard brush. So if we want to emphasize an edge, we can just hit alt and then we can start to like create those outward lines, um, those like very sharp details, which can be great in order to sketch like um, existing panels or to emphasize them. Alternatively, another like tool that is fairly widespread um, is a brush pack called Opcrack Brushes. Um, those are available for free. I will be having a link down in the description. So essentially, you can just drag them into your brush folder in your ZBrush um, library, and then you can access them. And essentially, what they are doing is they create like an an equally, they are 
pretty similar to the damp standard brush however they as you can see have like more constant fall off so every now and then I like to use them in order to in order to create like detailed edges because unlike the damp standard brush they actually look like hard surface scratches and stuff so that being said um, like I said those are probably like the tools I'm using for the most part when it comes to creating those block out stages um, obviously also like switching matcaps so this one right here um, and the metal one work pretty well in order to detect like hard edges um, which is especially important in the polishing stages later on so that being said I will be covering some of those polishing techniques once I'm um, done with the block out um, perhaps you've learned something um, don't hesitate to leave a comment if you have any questions and have a great day.